Greetings and welcome to In-Depth, I'm DK Rostar. Now, this is part one of a series focusing on the National AIDS Coordinating Committee with the intention of educating the public on HIV AIDS as it relates to transmission, testing, treatment and support, etc. We are encouraging persons infected or affected by HIV and AIDS to accept treatment and support resources available and to clarify any misconceptions on HIV and AIDS. Now we're starting off by setting context and overall parameters for the entire lineup and we're going with the chairperson of the National AIDS Coordinating Committee and the manager of the HIV Workplace Advocacy Unit, Heather Rodney. Welcome Ms. Rodney, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for having me this afternoon. It's definitely our pleasure. Now, the acronym for this long name is NAC. NAC, yes. All right, so give us that overview, please. The NAC, the acronym NAC, really stands for the National AIDS Coordinating Committee. And the National AIDS Coordinating Committee was established many years ago in 2006. However, in December 2016, it was re-established as the NAC. It is under the auspices of the Minister of State, Mrs. Ayanna Roy Webster, and is located in the office of the Prime Minister. The Secretariat is found in the office of the Prime Minister. And one of the things, though, is many times we hear there's an agency, there's a unit dealing with one thing, but we don't realize how many things go into that in terms of there being a team dealing with issues on a holistic level. So I get, I take it as a multi-sectoral team. Oh yes, the NAC is a multi-sectoral team and comprises of government, private sector, non-governmental organizations, faith-based organizations, community-based organizations, and also persons living with HIV. And from 2006 to 2016 to now, if we were to get an idea of the function, the mandate of the organization, what, what is the primary role and function? As the name um, implies, the NAC is the coordinating unit of the national response to HIV and AIDS in Trinidad and Tobago. And when I say coordinating, and earlier I said we are a multi-sectoral organization, we therefore coordinate all aspects, whether it be biomedical via the Ministry of Health, social, Ministry of Social Development and Family Services, activities in the workplace via the Ministry of Labor, uh, the private sector, persons living with HIV. We coordinate all the activities that are undertaken towards an adequate response to the virus in the country. So how do you start that? Is it a matter of saying, okay, well, we need to deal with health first, we need to deal with psychosocial issues first? Uh, is there a tiered approach, or how do you begin? Um, because there's implementation, there's also policy. Yes. There is no first and there is no last. Things happen simultaneously. Um, a lot of times people play, play focus on the biomedical aspect, getting testing and getting tested and getting treatment, but there are so many other aspects. And while we seek people to get tested and treatment, we also have to deal with the psychosocial needs of persons. We also have to ensure that persons can maintain their positions in their workplace, whether or not they have contracted the illness. So multi-sectoral and multi faceted approach. So we do not allow one thing to lead the other, but they are all addressed simultaneously. Now, I know that Spranglang used to say that precure is better than invention. So in terms of prevention, tying into the work that you do, how do you, how do you uh, implement that aspect of it? Okay. So the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, we have five priority areas. Prevention is just one of them. There's treatment, care and support, strategic information, advocacy and human rights, and also program and policy management. With prevention, we do a lot of sensitization, outreach activities, we build capacity, persons are trained in various aspects because HIV can be prevented. 
and therefore we place a lot of emphasis on preventative programs while we also look at all the other sectors of our response. The, in, the, in the introduction, we had two words, infected and affected. Yes. And with regard to the building capacity, is it among organizations? Is it among family groupings? Is it among individuals? Uh, how does that building capacity uh, work when you're looking at those who are infected versus those who are affected? Well, when we build capacity, we first look at our stakeholders and our implementing partners, those who actually get the job done within the national response. So therefore, we will want to build capacity for NGOs who look after persons affected, infected um, with HIV. We look at persons in the workplace who have to ensure that persons who find themselves um, having been tested positive, do not lose their job. So in all aspects, we build capacity for persons to carry on, to roll out the response. So whereby persons may have all good intentions, they may not have the where all to actually get the job done. We identify those areas, we identify those persons, we identify stakeholders who can assist us, we engage them, and we conduct capacity, capacity building exercises for those individuals. And when we return from the break, I want us to talk a little bit about the way that these exercises are conducted, uh, the what drives the uh, initiatives that take place in terms of like what kind of data sets do you use, how do you get that data, but we will do so when we return. We are speaking with a chairperson of the NAC as well as manager of the HIV Workplace Advocacy Unit at the Ministry of Labor, uh, Ms. Heather Rodney. Stay with us. We'll return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking with Chairperson of the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, Ms. Heather Rodney. And we so we've started to kind of lay the table and set that context within which the NAC works. But we always want to know where you're getting your information from mm -hmm. and how does that information influence the initiative. So where do you get those data sets? So we have the UNAIDS website. We get our biomedical data from the Ministry of Health. But I want to also say that the NAC is guided by two major documents, a national strategic plan that identify our priority areas for intervention and the national workplace policy. At this time, we are working on both documents. We are very close to completing the national strategic plan for 2023 to 2028. Coming out of that plan, we are also simultaneously working on completing the national work, the national policy on HIV and AIDS, uh, which is going to guide all other documents within the national response. Those documents guide us as to who are supposed to be our targeted personnel, not just for um, intervention, but also capacity building, where we can get stakeholders to work alongside us in all our ventures, and actually what are the trends in society as it relates to those infected, those affected, uh, to pave a, a clear way as to how do we approach our interventions to meet the needs of our targeted population. And looking at that targeted cohort, looking at those key interventions, key data sets, so in terms of prevalence of infections or any other information like that that you're working with, what are some of those statistics that you're dealing with that inform the work of the, of the NAC? At this time, we have a 1% prevalence rate for HIV-positive persons in the country. Uh, that may seem small, but one person infected, we believe, is too much. So we want to reduce that, and we also want to ensure that we curb 
the transmission from HIV to AIDS. And so we look at that. We also look at our targets we are trying to meet. Uh, you must have heard our Minister of Health in the past speak about the global targets, uh, the, 19, the 95, 95, 95 global targets, where we are working towards 95% of our population knowing their status. That is where it starts. In achieving this, the other 95 target would be 95% of those who know their status are on retroviral therapy, antiretroviral therapy. And the final 95 would be 95% of those who are on therapy are now on, on their, their status can, is, is undetected. It, it has been reduced to the extent that if a test is conducted, they cannot transmit the disease. It wouldn't be found in testing them. And uh, I would say at this time that the first 95 target, we have, met, we have reached 95% of our target of persons being tested. Out of that, at this stage, we have 63% of persons who know their status being on therapy. So you all understand we have some work still to be done there to reach our 95%. We also have 93% uh, of the persons who know their status are in therapy. And what we have found is that because we have such a high percentage of persons being in therapy, knowing their status and being in therapy, we have a lot of persons who are now undetectable. And we commonly call it U equals U. Undetectable leads to untransmittable. So when your virus lo load becomes so low, you are not free of HIV, but it's almost impossible for you to transmit the virus to anyone else. And I want to make a very clumsy comparison. It's almost as though someone who has been sober for however amount of time, they don't, they always say, okay, well, um, I'm an alcoholic or I'm a person with always a substance use, but they're always in recovery. Always in recovery, yes. So an HIV positive person will always be HIV positive, but to a certain extent now, it will be almost impossible for you to transmit the virus. You could live full life after that. And I'm very glad that you're able to say that. And because that makes me want to ask, what are some of those challenges in terms of making the first 95, which you've done, and congratulations, or making the second 95, mm -hmm. and having people say, okay, well, this is, this is the situation. There's no, is one or the other. Okay. And saying, okay, well, these, these antiretrovirals will help the situation. So what are some of the challenges in moving from that 63% to 95%? So let's start with the first 95. And I said earlier that we were looking to get 95% of the population get tested to know your status. What we need to do for that, we are going to ramp up our messaging because we have to send the message out there that HIV, a positive HIV test, is no longer a death sentence. You could look, live for lives with, with uh, a positive test, and therefore it is in your best interest, your partner's best interest, for you all to get tested. So we are looking at improving and increasing messaging on testing. In addition to which, the second 95, where we have reached 63%, um, some work still to be done, we want people to know that, and thanks to the government, who have for quite some time now provided free antiretroviral therapy, that once you get tested, you are automatically linked to treatment and care. You are not left alone. You are automatically linked to treatment and care, and the treatment is free. It's expensive treatment, but the government has provided it free of charge. So we want to encourage people to do that. Get tested, be placed on, on treatment. So again, messaging, messaging. The third 95 is where, um, where and I said we have reached about 93% of our target where people are becoming undetected. So we, we want to use those type of figures to encourage people to see what can happen if you first 
get tested and right after if unfortunately being tested positive you enter into treatment and in in a few years once you continue using your treatment as prescribed you can become undetected so it's a lot of messaging on our part but we also want to uh, make a clarion call to you and every one of our citizens to come and join us in any way possible you can do it through your organization Although the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, as the name implies, it's the Coordinating Committee, we depend on organizations, individuals, workplaces, and we have the Ministry of Labor treating with workplaces to assist us in the national response. It's a whole-of-society approach for us treating with the mandate. And in the three minutes that we have there are two questions that I want to ask one where do it is treatment localized to an area in the way that somebody may need to go to a specific location for dialysis is it something that can the person can go with their treatment and be meted it be meted out and secondly what do you think the biggest changes will be with using the national strategic plan as well as the national policy on HIV AIDS Treatment is available in all geographic areas in the country. We have the main clinic for treatment, which is the Medical Research Foundation in Port of Spain. We have treatment at Port of Spain General Hospital, San Fernando General Hospital, and quite a range of treatment sites throughout our uh, uh and even while you, while you remember that point also, talk, talk to me about the impact you think of the National Strategic Plan and policy on AIDS, because we have about a minute. Okay, what I wanted to say, throughout the country's health centers, they are treatment. So the National Strategic Plan that we are completing right now is guiding us as to what our response should look like in the next five years and you would appreciate that in developing that document before we went forward we had to go backward so we looked at the previous strategic plan and we evaluated that what were the strengths what were the weaknesses where the gaps existed and so in developing this treatment plan and we have all aspects of the society participating in developing that treatment plan just last week thursday and friday we had two days of activities getting to that so it, there's an input from all sectors we now know that the previous treatment plan allowed us to achieve certain things but because of the developments we make now we are looking to new targets new developments and so the Strategic plan is going to guide us in that direction. How do we treat with our priority areas? And the national workplace policy would guide the rollout of all plans that are developed through each sector as we continue following and getting our mandate achieved. Ready and all hands on deck approach all you. Hands we want, on deck. And we want to thank you so much. A chairperson of the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, Ms. Heather Rodney. This has been In Depth with me, DK Ronsta. Thank you so much for joining us.